thank god <laughs> i thought i wasn't recording that entire time <sighs> which is had a mini heart attack all right so today we are trying new makeup once again i'm gonna leave my last one of these videos i did down below i feel like i haven't done like peach makeup in a long time so i wanted to do more of like a summery peachy kind of look everything is linked down below in the description box and i'm also going to be pinning a comment with the description box as well i don't have anything exciting or funny to say in this intro i'm sorry to disappoint <laughs> here we go i hope you enjoy let's do some makeup all right it's the middle of the afternoon whenever i film in like the middle of the day it just feels weird because i usually film like first thing in the morning but here we are i've had a whole day already <laughs> finally trying this stuff out it's the Too faced born this way healthy glow moisturizing skin tint vegan all day hydration on support it said medium coverage hopefully I've got a good shade here. This one's natural beige. But let's first see how it is with a brush on half my face. Oh yeah, I think this shade's gonna be good. SPF 30 says watermelon and apple. Uh, it's just dripping down my face. You're probably blowing this in. Whoa, that has more coverage than I was expecting. I mean, I guess I got a decent amount too, but that just covered really nicely. Feels definitely liquidy and just like lightweight, but it's blending out easy. I guess I put a lot, but I feel like I'm getting low full coverage, like on the full coverage spectrum, not super opaque, but I mean, it's covering a lot. I'm gonna try a sponge on this side just so we can see. Typically with more liquidy foundations like this, a sponge isn't usually the way to go because I just find that it can like soak up a lot, but we'll see, I did already dampen my sponge and I picked up a fresh set of my favorites because these were actually literally like 280 or something the other day for two of them. It was like some crazy stacking coupon thing. I think it was an accident. <laughs> I posted about it on Instagram. A lot of you guys ended up getting it at that price. If you wanna stay up to date on the makeup sales and deals going on and like my recommendations, I post a lot over on Instagram stories. Also just like random travel life things, but just so you can see, here's the dampened size versus the not damp size. I think that's about the same amount. Yeah, dude, this has coverage. Look at that. Even with the sponge. Even with the sponge, I feel like I'm getting really good coverage. Weirdly is looking a little bit more matte and like dry on the sponge side. The finishes are pretty nice. Both of them just look pretty skin-like. I do prefer the brush side a little bit better. I gotta dye my roots later today, so slick back ponytail it is, you know? Dude, this is looking good. Just kind of like melting into my skin. By the way, I didn't put an SPF on underneath. I just kind of wanted to see the finish of only the foundation on its own. Looking really good. I feel like it's looking like pretty soft around my pores on its own, but I'm thinking if I just did a little bit of like a pore filling primer right around here, I'd be looking like pretty blurred. And I think it's a satin finish, I would say. Looks like natural, like a very natural. It doesn't look too flat, not too matte but it always depends what you put under and over too. So I'm sure if I had like, you know, dewy SPF underneath, it would look more dewy over top. I have a new, I'm pretty sure this is new, concealer by Pacifica is the Dreamlit Glow Concealer. I have the shades nine and seven. By the way, a lot of this was sent in PR. I removed myself from like, I wanna say 95% of PR lists when I started traveling a couple years ago, but I still have some that are coming in so when i'm back in seattle i like went and got it all oh this is definitely too dark okay that is not my shade <laughs> this is very heavy packaging it's a glass like straight up glass packaging this looks a lot lighter in the bottle than when you actually like take it out on here just FYI, if you're like looking at it in store pacifica products i feel like are really hit or miss I feel like my eyes are starting to burn a bit with this one not loving the coverage it's doing some brightening just because of the shade like you know it's lighter than my face but I feel like it's starting to crease already and also you can see darkness coming through. Yeah, this one I can tell is gonna be a no. It doesn't have quite enough coverage for me. So yeah, it's creasing already. Let me try and let this one sit on for longer and see if I get more coverage. So some concealers, you just gotta, gotta do it, let it sit. Well, that's sitting, I'm gonna use the tinted NYX Brow Glue. I just said that so slow because I always wanna say brew glow. I can feel this kind of, what is happening? I feel this kind of drying down, so I'm gonna actually blend this out first. Okay, well that looks better than the other side for sure. Definitely got more coverage. Still doing that thing where it's like looking real dry and creasy right there though. Because I have more coverage on this side, I would say I'm at like medium coverage on this side, low coverage on this side. I am gonna apply a little bit more and just let it sit on this side just to even it out. This stuff is very stringy, very glue-like. Speed reviews is coming. 
<laughs> like I've said that in every recent video. It's the next one I'm filming. It'll be up after this video, I'm pretty sure. Have I plucked my brows since the shadow and schmooze? Where I said my brows were tragic. No, I have not. Sitting on definitely helps. Still no, still no. Oh, now there's like drilling happening. Sounds like an air mattress is being inflated actually. Okay, my forehead is looking good, dude. You like can't see foundation texture at all. You definitely want to let whatever brow glow. Oh my God, <laughs> why do I have such an issue with that word? Whatever brow glue, brow gel you're using. There we go. Just let it fully dry before you go in with brow pencil because if not, the pencil just like goes over weird and doesn't stick well. I swear my filming timing without a doubt is always the worst. Like it'll be silent all day. And then right when I sit down to film, someone will start blowing leaves, vacuuming, drilling, construction. Oh yeah, blowing leaves, it's happening. Still think that's one of the weirdest activities that humans have managed to come up with, blowing leaves. Well, I'm gonna hope you can't hear that as much as I can. Okay, I'm very excited to try this. The Physician's Formula Butter Contour Palette. Bronzer and contour. So there's like a deeper shade for bronzer, more cool toned shade, and then this light one, which looks like a highlighting kind of like under eye shade or something. Let me go see what's going on. My dude is blowing leaves just down the hallway. <laughs> I'm gonna first take the contour shade and I'm gonna use this little pointier brush by Nisa. I haven't tried this brush for contour before. I usually use it as like a powder highlighter if I want something to just disperse it really like fluffy, you know? That's a nice shade. That's a nice tone. I need someone to start the career of leaf blowing police, you know? Like we need someone to monitor all these crazies who leaf blow. I volunteer as tribute. Okay, I'm really, really digging that shade. I'm gonna take the bronzier shade and just use that for my forehead. This might be too dark right now, but when I have like fresh tanner on, it'll probably be really nice. That finish, let me feel the finish of that Too Faced because it's applying like it's going on top of powder. So I have a feeling it's gonna be pretty like dry to the touch. Oh yeah, you guys. I love when products dry down like this. This feels like a powder, the Too Faced. It has a like dry to the touch kind of feel, which I love, especially because typically with a product like this, you can still alter the finish to make it look dewier if you want, but then you don't have like the tackiness of a lot of dewy products. I do want to try the lightest shade right here. So I'm going to take it on a powder puff and just apply a little bit on the outer part of my eye and see how it does since I'm already not liking the, you know, concealer. I'm not gonna bring it all the way in though because it does look like it's a little bit too dark for my under eyes right now. That concealer is creasing really badly. That lightest shade looks like it has some decent coverage. Yeah, for my skin tone, it would need to be a little bit lighter for this purpose. My Duolingo just went off. I re-downloaded it like 10 days ago. So determined to do the streaks again. Haven't opened it once. So I've already tried the Essence Pure Nude blushes, but I never found a shade that I like love loved. This one looks like it's gonna be closer to what I like. This is 04 Bold Heart. Yeah, powders are applying so nicely on top of this foundation. Now I'm actually kind of curious how liquid products would apply. It's pretty. Still not wowing me, but it's pretty. I'm gonna add a little bit of Pretty Peach. Same formula, just different shade. Let's disperse. Oh, that shade might be more up my alley. That has more of like a little pop to it. It's weird. The formula is not super consistent. I feel like between shades in these, like some of them are definitely more glowy than others. Some just look like dull. And I feel like they almost came out with like too many shades where a lot of them just look super similar. Obviously it's layered on the other one right now, but I feel like pretty peach might be the way to go. But like, even this doesn't look like super peach, you know? Lately I've been just going like this with whatever's left over and just gives like a little bit more of that like sun kiss kind of look. This is a new Too Faced highlighter. It's the Moon Crush Out of This World highlighter. Oh, I just said that so many times. In the shade Shooting Star. Look at this pattern. It has this like really pretty little moon star pattern on it. I'm excited to try this, especially because my face is more like matte right now. So I feel like I need a nice little pop. Oh, I'm liking that. It has the pop, but it's not emphasizing texture. I'm gonna do a lighter hand on this side and see how it applies just like more sheer. Oh yeah, this is pretty. You can get just that like more everyday light kind of glow if you just use less, look at that. I like both, just different looks, but I'm preferring this side, the more natural one. But just to even it out, I'm gonna add a little bit more. It is sitting on top of my skin really pretty though. It doesn't look too textured at all. 
So these are actually shadow sticks by It Cosmetics, but I'm going to use them as eyeshadow bases because they seem like they could totally be that. There's a white one and then this light tan one, the whites, professional pearl and silk armor. Are these matte though? I haven't looked. Honestly, don't look that pigmented, at least the white one. Okay, they definitely both have a sheen. So probably not something I would normally use as an eyeshadow base. I would more so use it as an actual shadow stick, which is what they are. But this one I'm gonna try on my inner corner afterwards, but I am gonna apply this one all over my lid. Just, let's just see it. I don't feel like that's like anything special as far as a shadow stick. It looks kind of sheer. I'm not getting like a ton of sheen. Just looks very average for the price. I feel like you could definitely skip that. But I am gonna try the white one on my inner corner after. I wanna do a look using some of these like really pretty shimmery warm tones down here. It's the Italian Spritz palette. How cute is this packaging? I'm gonna start with the lightest pink matte shade in the corner. Poli Cannoli, that's what it's called. I actually purchased a couple new palettes to try. I'm gonna do another video testing more Sephora makeup. This does have the, I feel like it's a little bit of the peach scent, like from the peach palette. If you have greenish, bluish eyes and you use pink or like peachy tones like this, it can really make them pop. This is a nice everyday light pink. Like it's not too abrupt, too intense pink. I'm gonna try Como After Dark first and see how it pulls on the eyes. Oh yeah, that's pretty. I still want it to be nice and soft and like not too intense. So I'm not gonna do too, too much, like too smoky. This shade right here, Chow Bellini, looks so pretty. It's like a peachy shimmery shade. I'm gonna take it on my finger. This looks like a peachy pink with like flecks of gold in it. That is pretty. Ooh, I haven't done this kind of color in such a long time. I feel like lately I've been keeping it pretty neutral on the eyes, so this is exciting, folks. Here's Take Me to Church. It looks like it has a little more pink in it, so I think I'm gonna apply that one out here. Both of those are pretty. I'm gonna take the It Cosmetics White Shade Shimmery White, just do a little on the inner corner. Ooh, okay. Very easy, quick, and I feel like it has nice brightness for every day without being too, too intense. I'm gonna mix the two matte shades that I used before. I'm taking a flat liner brush. I'm gonna use this brown shade, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm gonna take a little bit of this shade too, blend those two together and do like a little bit of a smudged liner on top, even though I am gonna be also trying a liquid liner. Okay, I feel like for just an everyday soft, like wearable pinky kind of toned look, you could totally just stop here and put on mascara and call it a day. I do have some liquid liner and I think there's a pencil liner I wanna try too. So I am gonna make it a little more intense, but you could totally stop here. Okay, I do have a brown pencil liner though, so I'm definitely gonna try this. It's the Milk Makeup Limitless. Have I tried this before? This is really hard to do on camera. Okay, we'll see if that bleeds or how it stays on, but it went on easily onto the waterline, so that's good. I'm gonna use the Better Than Sex liquid liner. Definitely used to use this a long time ago. I wanna keep the smudge look, so I'm really just using this to kind of like elongate my eye a little bit, but I still want the brown to be nice and soft and I don't want it to be like too intense. As I say that and it gets too intense, I'm gonna try to blend that out while it's still wet. <laughs> Soften that up and I'll probably go back over it with brown. It's a little more intense than I wanted. Just like smudging it while it's still a bit wet. I'm gonna mix those two shades again like I did before and just go right over top, kind of tone it down. The brown pencil liner, the Milk Makeup one, is transferring down a little bit right here, so I don't love that. I'm gonna put on a thin coat of mascara, pop on some lashes, and then we'll be back for lips. Okay, so I put on my cream liner on the waterline and then I used my Amy Coley mascara and I did my MAC mascara on the bottom and I think I decided against lashes for today. I feel like if I did put on lashes, it would like take this to the next level, but honestly, I'm just not in the mood to deal with lashes right now. But here's the eyes without lashes on just so you can see and see the mascara more. I have two different shades of this lip liner, the Lip Injection Lip Liner. The one that's more mauve is Puffy Nude, and the other one is Post-Op Pink. Let's try Post-Op Pink. The pencils click up, but there's not really like a fine tip. It's just kind of like a flat circle, which is interesting. You're trying to like be real precise. I think this is gonna be a little too peachy for my liking. Hmm. Actually, it looks nice with this look. I might take the other shade too. I just want to add a little bit more depth and shape, so I might actually layer this shade. I feel like they're starting to have that like plumping tingle a little bit, which I guess would make sense if this is part of the 
lip injection line. It says extreme lip shaper. Yeah, it says plumping lip liner. That makes sense. You can feel like a little bit of the tingle from like, you know, plumping products. I wanted to try, like retry this. It's the Urban Decay Text Me. So far I haven't been obsessed with the shade, but I kind of want to retry. So here we go. Is that a little bit? Definitely feel the lip liner. This is like an interesting formula. It's like very thin, has like a kind of cream satin finish. I actually feel like those combined is doing it for me. This on its own is like a little bit too peachy or something. Oh, cool, I already broke this blush. <laughs> just dropped it. Might just be because I put a lot of lip liner on and kind of like all over my lips and like layered it, but that's pretty decent burn for like a lip plumping product. <laughs> so this is the final look. I'm gonna go through my standouts, least favorite, favorite so far. And as always, I update in speed reviews videos. So once I test them more, you'll get kind of my final thoughts on the product. I would say my bottom two so far are these two. Definitely this shade of the It Cosmetics Superhero, the shadow stick, just nothing special, like at all. But the white shade I totally would use on the inner corner again. The Milk Makeup Longwear Eyeliner. This I definitely would pass on. I don't know if this is like a new product or if they reformulated pass one. I feel like this one is kind of transferring down to where I had to like, you know, put another cream liner on the waterline to brighten up my eyes again. So it could be nice as more of like a smudging liner using on the top, but as far as the waterline, I'd probably skip this one, especially when there are like drugstore liners that are amazing on the waterline. Okay, let me do my standouts so far. Obviously just applied this. So with foundation, definitely can't say like right off the bat that I'm in love. I thoroughly test foundations, see how they apply, wearing it with different products underneath and over top, but so far, this is looking beautiful and I when I was putting on the mascara I was in the other room and then I was in the bathroom lighting and like it just looked so soft and flattering in every mirror that I was looking in and then also just in the natural light in that room as well. Right now I'm in natural light but it just looks friggin stunning. It has coverage but still looks skin like but it's definitely leaning towards more of a matte finish like satin matte finish which is hard to find products with that combo of things where they look like very skin-like but still have more of a matte finish and coverage. And this is so far looking good. I feel like with eyeshadow palettes, it's just like, obviously how's the formula, but also are you gonna get use out of the shades? And for me, this one, I like all the warm tones. I like the peaches. I probably won't get a whole lot of use out of the blues or like the other tones at this point, just not the kind of like, you know, shades I usually use. I'm liking this shade out of this palette. I feel like this one now it looks nice, but I had to kind of like work to blend it more. I will try it, of course, on top of other foundations. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it was just the initial brush I used, whatever. I do feel like it applied better on my forehead with my bigger powder brush rather than like the small brush. This one though, I like with the small brush. I would say this is another standout, the Too Faced Shooting Star. Sitting nicely on texture, which is hard one to find. It's looking pretty. It's almost reminding me a little bit of the look of the Hourglass Strobe Lighting Palette. That would look actually really pretty on the inner corner probably. Lip combo I did, I'm liking the end result and like the shade a lot, but I'm actually surprised how much of a tingle slash burn this has and it's it's still going, <laughs> it's still going. Let me know any other new products on Sephora that you wanna see tested or drugstore products down below in the description, not the description box, in the comments. By the way, YouTube, I feel like they're making it harder to open the description box even like for me as a viewer, when I'm watching other people's videos, it's like, why do they have this tiny ass little one word that opens up the description box that's like hidden in all of these things. So I think I am gonna start pinning my description box in a comment as well, just because I feel like it's easier to see when you're like going to the comment section. So if you want to shop any of the links in this video and read the description box, I will also pin it as a comment down below and I'm gonna start doing that, I'm pretty sure. Let me know if that makes it easier for you. It just annoys me as a viewer too. Hope you enjoyed this video. Love you guys, thanks for watching. See you in my next video.